guys. Well, hello. Yeah. What? Um, what do you want? Let's let's uh, let's have a hypothetical. It's a hypothetical thought experiment here. Okay. Let's say you got a kid, right? And I don't know, you know, what your life choices were that led you to that happening, but whatever. Did it's your I, problem. Did, did, you did I kid. steal this kid? Yeah. Do his parents know? <laughs> yeah. That the backstory is unimportant. Okay. To fine. everybody but the police. Okay. So, um, uh, 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 you've got a kid, and you want them to learn to hate America, to love Satan. Yeah, okay. Uh, and to um, get an abortion before their tenth birthday. Where do you send them? This this all sounds plausible and uh, and accurate. Into well, I, I, my own feelings. Well, I have I have an answer to this little oh, conundrum, oh, and, and it's going to be provided by a couple friends joining us today. They are Kim Newton, who is the executive director of Camp Quest, and Neil Polzin, who is the board chair and the camp director of Camp Quest West. Welcome, guys. Hey there. Hello. Well, with that interview uh, or introduction, I thought it was going to be a friendly interview. <laughs> I know. I'm, like, I'm sitting here thinking, like, what are they going to expect us to talk about? <laughs> Those are good things, right? That's what, that's what atheists and skeptics are, right? Yeah, right. America hating Satan lovers. Everybody knows this. Or, or maybe Kim and Neil, you guys can set us straight on that and talk about uh, what Camp Quest actually is all about. <laughs> Uh, and 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 save the children from the fate that Mark seems to want them all to go through. Well, if you uh, if you haven't heard of Camp Quest, then you then you've tuned into the right podcast on the right day. That's yeah, right. exactly. Yeah, yeah, because we uh, think we've got something really special going on, um, which is a camp that encourages kids to think for themselves. Uh oh, like it's that it's that easy. That's right? a, that sounds that sounds dangerous <laughs> and uh, and possibly subversive. I think we're back in Mark's territory again. Probably both. <laughs> Told you. Um, but so we are a summer camp that focuses on science, critical thinking, and humanist values, and we've got a network of camps that span thirteen states. Um, and yeah, we're we're just really excited about summer camp and providing a great opportunity for kids to come together and to use their brains, you know? Well, yeah, that's, yeah, that's amazing. Like, t tell us, tell us a little more about the, the, the camp experience. Like, how does it, uh, how would that look? Yeah, to, I, uh, a young camper? I, as a, uh, growing up as a Mormon boy, strangely, my camp experience was either Boy Scout camp, which was, which was in Utah. And that, that meant that mm -hmm. all of the Boy Scouts were, were Mormons. Yeah. Or yeah. I, I also strangely also I participated in uh, day camp at uh, the Jewish Community Center. Right. So okay. Entire my a, uh, all mix. of my uh, all of my camp experience had a lot of prayer, some of which was in Hebrew. Um, <laughs> but I but I the thought of a camp experience that's actually just focused on learning cool shit sounds amazing. Yeah, well, so I can relate to some of that. Um, growing up out west, I was also in the Boy Scouts. I did Eagle Scout. I worked at Camp Cherry Valley out here, which, even though it was on the west coast, was still run by Mormons. And we had quite a few uh, LDS out here running different camps. And with the, the program so attached to the church and having such a, a presence out in Los Angeles, they were still quite connected. Mm -hmm. But that all ended. I'm very sorry about away. that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I wrote them a letter saying I'm an atheist. Uh, what are you going to do about it? They they replied, well, you don't work at camp anymore. So I wow. <laughs> hopped over to Camp Quest. But uh, to answer that question, first and foremost, like those scout experiences, we do a lot of camp stuff, right? We do archery. We do canoes. We do rock climbing. Uh, there's arts and crafts. But we, we talk about our free thought heroes. We talk about critical thinking. And we, we look at those kind of skills instead of the, the merit badges you'd be used to in scouts. But the, the kids get to come to camp and, and actually have a, a camp experience, an American summer camp um, experience that you would expect. Is 50 too old to, to come to camp? Is that <laughs> no, to be a definitely I, not. We okay, want that sounds you, like a ball. We want like you at camp. Please come. <laughs> you probably no. don't, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, we definitely are fueled by uh, volunteer love. Mm. So... Um, our volunteers are really the heart of Camp Quest. Um, I mean, of course, we do it for the campers, but the volunteers really keep it going. Um, we have over 450 every year that dedicate a week or more out of their summer 
to make camp happen. No kidding. 450 yeah. volunteers around the country. Yes, every year. Amazing. Um, Absolutely. And as Kim yeah. said, we run over uh, over 20 sessions in 13 states. So we're at 19 sessions, I think, this last year in 13 yeah, states. So mm-hmm. we're we're looking at Utah. I know we had uh, we chatted with you guys about that and had some conversations. We have some yeah. volunteers looking to get one going out there relatively soon and, and get that process going. But yeah, right so, now we have them located coast to coast. Yeah, any of your listeners in Utah, if you're interested, we um, we've already got a core group of uh, of folks in in the state, of mostly around the Salt Lake area, who are interested in bringing a camp there. So email me camp at campquest.org, um, and I will put you in touch with folks, and we'll we'll try and get camp out there. Let me tell well, you something, love, Utahns, Utahns will get that happening because uh, we got we got. Nothing but great places to to camp. Yeah, out truly. here in Utah. Unfortunately, a lot of it is uh, a, a lot of the good spots are taken by the, yeah. by the Mormons and mm-hmm. everybody. But there's so much. Yeah. It's just it's going to be beautiful once it once it's put together. Well, and in in Utah, you know, it's a separate discussion that the Mormons are now ending their relationship with uh, with the BSA because yes, of, because of the queers like me. But, uh-huh. um, but it it. For non-Mormon kids in Utah, it has been quite exclusionary. Yeah. Um, you know, it's been tough for young people that want to go to. Uh, it's always been hard for girls because they can't be in the Boy Scouts. But you know, for for non-Mormon boys who just could never be included in that process without all the proselytization and and kind of hyper nationalism that Mormon Boy Scouts bring to the table. So I, I I think Utah is very very ripe and hopefully very interested for that yeah. that experience. And you know, Camp Quest. You know, from the beginning, we've we've been welcoming kids with open arms. I mean, we're just all about being welcome and inclusive. And you know, the the way that that has shaped us over the twenty three year history of Camp Quest now looks like you know what that looks like in our programming is. Um, very intentional outreach and inclusion of LGBTQ youth. Mm -hmm. And uh, about eight of our camp locations now offer gender inclusive cabins. Um, So LGBTQ inclusion is a very important part of what we are all about. That's that's amazing. Both for campers and for staff. That's really amazing. And and I, I think uncles Mark and Daniel agree. There probably was not more of a homophobic place in history than Mormon Boy Scouts. Uh, well, yeah. there is, you say that, but I can't tell you how many of my gay friends had their first homosexual experience. <laughs> it's true. At Scout Camp. <laughs> so, can't be but that But you know what? <laughs> not, not me. What the fuck, man? <laughs> well, we tied knots. We got merit badges. You, you were too focused on, on your boondoggle. <laughs> I was all about my boondoggle. But let's not talk about my boondoggle. We'll just have to edit all that out. But, you were sp- Wasn't so, that? That was the last episode, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. So, Kim, so, one of the things I, I want to ask about, because suddenly you've talked about inclusiveness, I'm curious. Could kids invite their believing friends to come with them to Camp Quest? Absolutely. Um, and certainly plenty of kids who come to Camp Quest, you know, they, they might come from an interfaith family. You know, right. one parent believes and another parent doesn't. Um, You're not going to be you know, proselytizing or, atheism to them? Well, it, well let's say we, we're, we exist to help kids learn how to think, not what to think. Right. So when we talk about atheism or humanism or religion, it's all about offering information so that the kids can help make up their own minds and beliefs. Interesting. Yeah. So what, what, you know, for not just for Utah, but for other States, what, what is the requirement? What do you guys need to make one of these happen, to make a camp quest happen in a new place? Is that do, do you need to kind of piggyback on an existing facility? We do. So all of our camp programs run from for one week. So it's usually looks like a Sunday to Saturday program. Um, right. A couple a couple of the camps now have expanded to more than one week, but they're not necessarily consecutive. Mm-hmm. Um, and we are program based, so we rent facilities from other camp locations. Right. Okay. So um, of course we would love one day to own our own camp, but. Uh, this is this is how we've operated and how we continue to operate. 
So we look for, you know, a group of free thinkers, volunteers who want to step up and offer a camp in their community, get in touch with us. And we will, we will work with you through the process of forming a camp, finding a facility and making a plan uh, for that launch. And that process can take the better part of a year. Sure. Um, so, uh, so yeah, that's, that's how we make it happen. It's just one conversation at a time. Um, well, yeah, I think that's amazing. I mean, we're so we're in October now. So obviously camps are not going to be happening for a minute. But that means that is it possible that there could be a new camp out ready to go by the by summer if they started now? It's possible. Yeah, I'm not going to say it's not it's impossible. <laughs> but it does definitely take a lot of planning. So like to give you an example, like our, our current camps, you know, a lot of them, they're having planning sessions this month you know, for, for the coming summer. Right. Okay. Um, so that's uh, that's something to keep in mind, but yeah, what, what, what it really takes is a couple of people who are going to step up and say, I'm going to do it. I'm going to make camp quest happen here. Um, I love it. And so, yeah. So I'm if that's you, if you're listening, then we want to hear from you. <laughs> yeah. So, you know what I'm, I'm putting out the call. Here's what I'm going to say. This, if, Somebody can be driven enough to get a Utah Camp Quest going next summer. I'll be one of your volunteers. Awesome. Ooh. Awesome. So that's, Thank that's, you. that's Uncle Dan putting out the word that somebody should just get as somebody who is way more driven than me. That does mean, though, that does mean that the camp has to be more than 500 yards away from a playground. It's true. No <laughs> schools. <laughs> call background checks and other staff requirements. Yeah. Yeah, that's assuming that I pass any of the background checks. That's a good point. Uh, Neil, talk to me about the experience that a, that a volunteer has uh, out there at your camp. I know that you're a director, so talk to me about someone, someone who comes in to volunteer. What, what, what's their experience like? Sure. So I'm lucky enough to, besides being the, the board chair for the national organization, I also happen to be the camp director for Camp Quest West the last couple of years out in California. So we usually have a good idea of our staff by the beginning of the year, uh, come January or so. So our previous staff, we've invited back to reapply. We're out there always looking for new staff. So anyone really coast to coast at this point, if you're interested in staffing, uh, your local camp quest, whether that be Texas, Washington, uh, out here in California, we have our Ohio or anywhere else. Take a look at campquest.org and you can email Kim. But we're always looking for those volunteers. A lot of times uh, registration for the kids open up come January, uh, perhaps maybe February. So those teams are building their curriculum at this point. They've already signed contracts with this camp for this next year. They start doing camp training. Uh, even though for most of volunteers, it's only a week per summer. They really do have to have all those qualifications, uh, all those background checks, all of that training to work with kids. So we start that early in the year. Right. Wow. Yeah. Awesome. And then and and you guys have a, a sorry, Dan, do you have a do you have a standard curriculum that uh, or program that uh, the, all the camps kind of work off of? Well, we don't. We actually have kind of an open program model where mm. it really builds on the skills the skill sets of the volunteers who are running the camp and also considers what activities and things are available at the campsite. So each camp quest is unique. Um, and what you'll experience at one camp, um, you know, in Ohio is going to be different from camp in the Smoky mountains. Mm -hmm. um, but all of them are built around the same values of inclusivity and critical thinking um, appreciation for nature and of course our free thought heritage. And that's the way our founders, uh, Edwin and Helen Kagan started the camp. Um, and so, and that's how we've continued today. Now we do have, uh, you know, activities that are shared between the camps. So, mm -hmm. you know, um, sort of core, what we call core activities like Socrates cafe, where the kids will have a, you know, open philosophical discussion uh, circle around the campfire, um, oh, you know, fun. or critical think critical thinking challenge skits where they're going to use the camp theme for the week to um, do skip skits with their cabin at the end of the week. Um, you know, instead of a moment of prayer, we have a moment of science. Nice. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> that is, uh, you know, so those are things that you're going to find throughout 
throughout all of the camps. Do they do um, they serve a I think therefore I ham sandwich in the cafeteria? <laughs> You do now. You can That's have that. a pretty good one. Oh my God! Uh, Doug will volunteer his punning services to absolutely oh. no one because they won't want them. We won't allow it. We won't allow it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah. So that's what the programming looks like. But the volunteers spend a ton of time developing and creating activities um, so that it's a new, fresh experience um, every summer for the kids who come back. Now I did um, I did catch that you said that uh, it depends on the skills of the volunteers and so uh, you may want to turn me down as a volunteer. <laughs> I've, re I've suddenly realized if skills are involved, I'm probably <laughs> not qualified. But come on, Dan, cocktails—that's a real thing. Yes. <laughs> I will train them up. They will be able to go home and make a killer G and T for their parents <laughs> later. I'm sure some of the parents would appreciate that. <laughs> uh, you know, you know, we when we say we're looking for skilled volunteers, you know, what we're saying is come as you are, you know, as long as you have a love for kids and a love for having fun, then, you know, you're going to make a great Camp Quest volunteer. Um, and of course, we provide training, you know, and the camps will also provide, you know, additional training if, you know, camp is a new experience for you. And we certainly get a lot of um, younger volunteers, you know, who are in college, um, and we also have volunteers who are in their sixties and seventies. Mm -hmm. So it's really, um, for our volunteers, a lifelong, you know, uh, for, for many of them, a decades long commitment, um, to doing camp quest, but, but yeah, if you're interested, then we, we want to have you. I love many, it. And I do want to stress really, there's so many different roles that people can volunteer uh, yeah. with camp quest, even if people can't make it out for a week during the summer. As we mentioned, a lot of these camps actually need help developing that program if that's where your skills are. Uh, if you, heck, if you know accounting, you'd be surprised how many nonprofit organizations are always looking for a treasurer. So that goes for right. camp or anyone else out there. Always try and find better ways to get involved. We'd love to have you at Camp Quest if you can spend that week, or even if you can't, you have some of the skills you can contribute during, uh, during the off season. Uh, there's always different ways to try and give back. Right, or exactly. Right thing to check is okay too. Yeah. How, that Sorry, how many how many kids uh, do you guys uh, put through in a summer? Right now, it's a, about a thousand, just over a thousand. Nice. Yeah, and so we're gosh in our in our whole history, we're like very close to having had ten thousand campers. Nice, love it. Yeah, all well, in all, and we're actually always looking at ways to to bring that programming and bring those skills to to more kids. So right now in the in the groups, we're having different conversations about ways to develop some programming and bring that to, to different models going forward, too. So we're looking for new ways to expand and new ways to reach more kids out there. Yeah, we've had a lot of interest from folks who are interested in day camp programming, programming like similar to Scouts. Um, and, you know, we've had these conversations internally for a while. And so we're exploring what those options look like. Um, you know, our camp in Minnesota has run a day camp for the last two summers. Um, so we're, we're exploring how to help Camp Quest be in more places. So if, again, if that interests you or you're interested in supporting that um, in our outreach, please contact us, visit campquest.org. You can donate, you can sign up to volunteer, you can check out the, um, all the information for the upcoming camps too uh, here after the new year. Well, that's amazing, you guys. Thank you so much for coming on and talking to us. And thanks for everything that you're doing for the all those poor bastard kids that don't know anything about Jesus. It's uh, it's <laughs> it, you're, you're doing the Lord's work, and we appreciate yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. And thanks so much for having us on. Yeah, and keep us posted about Utah. Kids. Thank you so much. Yeah. Oh, yeah. definitely. Absolutely. Thanks, all guys. Right. All right. Bye.